the big game has always attracted the best players in the world. It's a mix of high stakes poker, the adrenaline rush of a ticking clock, and the ever present threat of player evictions that have created a unique event. Now in its sixth year, the attention turns to the beautiful city of Vienna and the Montesino. Here the great and the good of the poker world have been drawn for another thrilling installment of the Party Poker Big Game. There's no denying that the big game brings together all the right ingredients for a fascinating event. The mix of players is explosive enough, but the player evictions add a little spice, and the ticking clock in this 48-hour non-stop game racks up the tension. All of that came into play as soon as the game got underway. Tension is never far away in this game, and the last couple of hours have been no exception as players battled for survival. Tony G's ability to survive depended on his tenacity. Having taken a battering in the early stages, he fought back, including a very satisfying moment against his tormentor-in-chief, Alec Torelli. There's the ace. Right in the window. But in the blink of an eye, Tony G's luck changed when he faced Phil Locke's trip aces. Locke's got a lot of outs here in this pot now. And there's one of them. Locke was never shy of pushing his luck and continued to amass his fortune, much to the horror of Jungle Man. Definitely Beach. not gonna work now. <laughs> Oof, he's he not the fold. A Lockean bluff. Alec Torelli, so long a dominant force at this table, had taken a battery from Locke. His fight back was slow and painful, but confirmed when three aces arrived against Yusuf Kurt. Oops. An act that proved to be the Austrians' undoing. Geschkenbein arrived with a fearsome reputation, but never really got into his stride. He was finally seen off by Tony G's flush, which proved a little more persuasive and saw Geschkenbein heading wow. for the door. For Bane, that could be it. The rise and fall of Torelli had been the story of the last few hours, but the fairy tale ending was stopped dead by his fellow players as the American was voted off the table. Unfortunately for Alec, the big yeah. game is over for now. The final act of a frantic couple of hours saw Trickett's Jacks see off the Jungle Man and the arrival of a fresh face, Sorrel Mizzy. And all in all, the story of the last few hours is fairly reflected in the leaderboard. Phil Locke, a clear winner in the profit and loss stakes. His nearest rival, J.P. Kelly, way back on 15K. The rest of the field, including the newest players, Catalin and Mizzy, all struggling to see daylight. Welcome to the table, sir. Enjoy your stay. Ignat is back. You remember Ignat? Yeah, of course. Um, he voluntarily left before the game. I, I think the yeah, game why did he is... Leave? He left after four hours. I don't know. Uh, and I think he just maybe thought the game was tough. Maybe wanted to sleep on the guys a little bit. This is actually a much better spot for him now, don't you think? Well, yeah, it's great. I mean, four of the guys have been playing for, you know, 12 plus hours and the rest of them have been up all night at the very least. And so, you know, he's, he's the most fresh. Um, of course, Mizzy as well. Yeah, but uh, the the guy to my right, uh, I'm gonna butcher his name, so I'm not Baron. gonna try. We're Baron, we're calling him the Red Baron. Yeah, the Red, Red Baron. Baron. <laughs> what a legend. Yeah, he's been playing the PLO all night, so I know he's he's been up all night, and the rest of the guys have been as well. So I mean, it's a great spot for him. And, and, and Baron's uh, topping up for 10,000 more, but Ignat was kind of he was paying off guys kind of light, didn't you think? Yeah, I mean, he didn't play. It was hard to tell because, you know, he had a few spots where it looked like he was going to call pretty light on the river. I, I regret my bluff as soon as I did it. What do you think about Jungleman at the table, Alec? I mean, is he... He's a funny kid. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, Scott was in was saying that he thinks that Jungleman is actually... Because his timing with all of three bets and four bets seems so good that he actually you know, is quite a good live player. I was just thinking it's all just sort of his computer and betting patterns and stuff. And yeah, and uh, sometimes I felt like I was fortunate to get a read on him in certain spots where I felt like he was thinking about the sizing and the bets. And uh, that worked out well for me, but 
Sick. But yeah, he's he's really tough. He's very aggressive. I was, we got to stay focused on the hand. We're gonna get yeah, yeah, we're gonna sorry, get kicked out of the booth. <laughs> J J J What's J happening? JP's open this, and we're we're four ways one. here for okay. uh, Kyle's three hundred each. Shocker. Yeah, and 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 JP's bet this, which is pretty normal. I mean, you, you flop top pair and a gut shot, and yeah, I think it's a good spot to just call here because uh, if you raise, you know, Check. most better hands. Are gonna call all better hands are gonna call you and worse hands like king queen is just gonna fold so you kind of force out uh the better the better hands and in this way you could you could really be deceptive and try and get some value in later streets i mean he picked up a great turn here about six hours ago that glass broke and i don't know not for you it's not your job but, but whatever like the house You could argue for a raise here with with 10-9. Uh, JP is going to be barreling this turn so often. And on the river, you got a call now. Uh, you've very much underrepresented your hand. I don't think it's a bad value bet, but I don't think that you got to figure your opponent could have. I think you got a value bet, King Queen here on the river. Um, I don't know a ton about JP. I would like to think that he's he's, cool. he's aggressive in the right spots, cool. and I feel like he's yeah. gonna he's gonna do it. King Queen. Um, because your opponent could have Queen Jack, he could have Ten Jack. Especially because all the draws missed, and JP JP could have missed his draw. So you you have to really. Uh, you have to put some value betting into your, your hands there. Otherwise, you know, you're just going to be too uh, exploitable. More to come from the big game after the break. news is never far away when it comes to the big game and the sudden departure of Tony G has stunned this game. After all, this was the man who was itching to get onto the table, who dived straight in, who shook off loss after loss, and who set out to prove that endurance was the key to winning here. But now, after just eight hours, he's decided enough is enough. Apparently, Alec, Tony G finally did leave the building. Yeah, I'm surprised. He, yeah, he probably just got bored. He doesn't like to wait. He needs the action. I don't know. I think the panda needed cuddling. That's really probably what it was. He, he looked like he was getting a little bored. He only brought him out once. It's kind of not fair to the panda to just make him sit there the whole day. You know? Absolutely. The panda does need the cuddling action, too. So. But I am proud I got the panda. At least I, at least I got it. You know, Someone had to get it. it was Absolutely. <laughs> Tony G's panda is a lot of added value. I mean, it's a good reason to sit at the table. So Kelly opens to 350. Phil makes a three bet to 950 in position which it's a generally is a good strategy you're really deep cool. and you're you're gonna put your opponent to tough positions right um, in fact JP decides to just move call with the ace king got a position which, which is which is interesting I think it's a good play he's going to be calling a lot out of position here with with marginal hands oh wow wow oh wow this is brutal this is so brutal this is gonna be free streets of well, he might check Pain, raise here. Yeah, he might check raise actually. Phil could have ace queen, ace jack, any eight suited ace. Of course. JP might want to check raise here. When, when JP check raises, it really looks kind of bluffy because. What is he representing? What is he representing? He's just I mean, flat call. He never has a yeah. three, and it's rare he has ace king. He didn't four bet pre flop. Yeah, you're right. Oh, this here is, it is. This is painful. Oh, this is catastrophic. Oh. Oh my god. Wait, no, no, he called. Did he call? No, no, he raised. He, he raised. raised. It looks like over. 4K. Yeah, it's over. Call. Phil's gonna just call and then it goes and then it's that just bet. And yeah, then it's, it's just brutal. Uh, How much does he have here? Can he get away from this? He has two. Uh, he's got no, he only has 27,000. 30k. There's, there's no saving, I, I think. Are you still working out for your Check. regularly? Or? Am I? Yeah. Um, yeah. I did um, five times. I've done like four weeks. I've probably had like 
And now oh, wow, he bet five thousand. Yeah, this is a great this bet is a really by good Phil. Bet. Yeah, really. This good is a bet. great bet by Phil because Phil knows that that JP either has an ace or or he's gonna fold. Uh, if he has two jacks, he's gonna fold to three thousand. He's gonna fold to five thousand. So betting the pot here is is brilliant because it really builds a huge pot on the turn that builds exponentially for the river. And by doing that, um, he could really narrow his opponent's range down. He he knows JP has ace king, ace queen, ace jack, and and now bomb it. There he is. He just bombed it. Yeah. Pot. Just pot bet. 15k. Well, I think JP. It's JP has 21,000 left. You know what? JP has JP's the ace of spades for sure. Too. I think Kelly's got to call here. Yeah. He's gonna. And be upset. he does, and he's gonna feel sick. Yeah. He kind of felt it. You could tell that. He kind of knew that he wasn't. Not, not that he wasn't good. He just knew that Phil had it. But it's just it's just so hard to fold such a big hand with how passively he played it. Um, I think you got to just pay it off there. And as Keep brutal it. as it is, it's just it's poker. It's just really hard to get a right against him when a guy's got that going on. Yeah, it, it feels like every time, uh, and I think the players are sensing this too, you just feel like every time you call, he has it. And when you fold, he doesn't. It's just a combination of good play and the right cards and a little bit of luck. And it's, you know, he's a good player. This is a good game, right? This is this is a really good game, especially right now with the with the change of table dynamics and the fact that people are getting a little bit tired. This is a good game, and it's playing so much bigger than what it sounds. I mean, this is not a twenty-five, fifty, a hundred, not your standard one, anyways. It's it plays big, and it's it's a good game. Is Trickett gonna get the money here? You think at the end of the day? Is he? Uh... Yeah, I I mean. Probably, I don't know. The guy's just, the guy's just good, and uh, he's, he's wow, very better used than to the Phil? long hours. <laughs> nobody's, and nobody's better than Phil, nobody's of course. Better than yeah. Phil. He's got it again, huh? <laughs> it's brilliant. He's gonna three bet, and Catalan's gonna call for sure. To a million. Catalan's definitely calling. So it goes limp for a hundred, and Phil makes it fifteen. 50. No, Catalan made it three hundred. Okay. I mean, but he's supposed to call here with. I think he limped. Yeah, I think he did limp. He, it's 1450 more to call. So yeah, it's limp 100 and and Phil just 15 exit, which is good against that kind of player. It is. He might even. How much does he have here? Ah, no, he has 20,000. So it's hard. It's not a great spot to call. You're gonna flop a set what one and eight times. So yep. you have to get, you know, eight times your bet. Well, you, you know, it's. If, it's he, close. if it's he close. if he stacks Phil whenever he flops it, it's it's profitable. But you can't know that Phil has aces, and you, you can't always expect to stack them. But I don't know if that's going to stop him from calling. I, I feel like he's going to convince himself. I feel like he's going to call yeah, here yeah, for it's sure. It's not even. Yeah. It's just really smart of Phil to just sort of understand that this guy wants to see flops. Yes. And that you can just overinflate the pot. I mean, that's clever, isn't it? Yes. Well, it is, and the other thing to consider is that Phil knows that the guy, when he limps, uh, he's never folding. Yeah, but he also knows that the guy has a hand that could bust aces. That's the point. When he limps, he knows he has something like seven, eight suited, a pocket pair, or something that Phil doesn't want to let the guy see a cheap flop with out of position. And, and that's so an interesting card. Phil's punishing card. him pre-flop. When, when Phil goes for pot control on the flop, uh, and then the eight comes. Now this this is pretty interesting. There's the Catalan's definitely peeling one off now with a pair and a up and down straight draw. Oh, for sure. And but uh, Phil can't be too worried right now here no. with how the hands played. I mean, Catalan checked the flop. If he had a set, he'd almost surely bet. Um, so he That's, can't be too worried. I don't even think he has to worry about a flush here at all because I feel like Catalan. But how about check two and deuce? Yeah. I mean, some some hands might no. I just bet. I don't like checking here on the river. I just bet. Um, I don't feel like Catalan has a flush at all. He bets the flop with a flush draw. And, I mean, what flush draws is he really going to have that he just calls the turn with? Um, they'd have to be pair plus flush draws, and he just bets the flop with those a lot. Um, also, to be fair, Alec, there, there's actually a bunch of hands that beat Phil where he's just going to get called with a river bet anyway. The guy's, uh, I mean, there's maybe some two pair hands and stuff that he's not even going to raise with on the river because the flush came. So you're just better off making the value bet anyway, aren't you? Right. Yeah, and I mean, the guy's always going to bet when he has you beat. And Phil's always going to call the river. He's not going to check fold the river there. 
And so the question becomes, given that I'm gonna, he's willing to put money in on the river, the question is how to do it. And if you know you're going to check call a bet, you're giving the opponent a free chance to check all the hands that are worse than yours that he might call a bet with. Uh, he might even check back a king there. I mean, if he played a king like weird or something like that. But if he has two nines, two tens, he's, he's going to check. And you get value from those hands. Opening ace-jack off under the gun in, in a game that's super aggressive is is not great. I mean, you're just going to be in a lot of tough spots post-flop, and you're going to be out of position against good players with deep stacks, and it's just it's tough to play, even hands that are pretty strong. So you think I like ace-jack there is a fold? I wouldn't, but I think it, it, you, you could profitably fold, probably. I mean, players aren't... They're not getting punished enough for their for their weak opens, are they? So if you can get away from these hands okay. post flop, it's okay, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. And I mean, I guess there is three blinds, so you're only facing two people behind you. It really depends on who's in the cutoff and who's in the button. So this flop got checked around. I think it's pretty scary for the initial raiser here, uh, Livu, to bet, uh, especially with Catalan in the pot. He hasn't folded <laughs> too often, and so he has to be worried that he's going to peel with any pair. Um, it will go check around again. Yeah. Uh, jungleman checks, so does Catalan. Uh, best hand for Jungleman uh, with the fives and a gut One shot. This is now the first time that Mizzy has stuck chips in the pot post flop. Yep. And even though his bluff might work here, I actually. I'm not in love with, with bluffing here. I just feel like he gets called so much. Jungleman peels I think Jungleman so lightly. Peel, yeah. He. And he's really tough to play against in that way, but he calls so often with so many hands, um, seemingly regardless of the action, if it's if it's for one bet, um, which makes him very tough to play against. And this is a pretty decent card for fives, I mean. Well, if Mizzy has a king, he's, he's, he's right. behind, and if he doesn't, he's still ahead. And so I feel like Jungle Man might... It's going to be check call, I think, I don't if, if Mizzy bets again. I mean, Jungle Man doesn't look like he has a king at all. So I think Mizzy is going to bluff here because he feels like the best well, hand Jungle Man could have is... Pair in a gut shot like he does. Yeah, like or, six, or five, you know, pocket four. eights, something yeah. like that. But but the thing is, Mizzy can have the king, and he's always going to bet a king, and Jungle Man knows that. Um, but he also knows that his hand looks weak, so he might, uh, he might look him up here. Look him up. He's raised oh, him. Oh, wow. I mean, he's got the blockers 4 to 4-5. Four, uh, he played it that way. Raised to 18,000. Yeah, he's got the blockers. I think that's what went through Jungle's mind, uh, mind right there. It's still sick play. <laughs> nice end jungle, man. It so it was just kind raise. of like he had three options there. He didn't like the fold. He didn't like the call because there were some hands that Sorrel was maybe uh, bluffing with that beat him. Yep, like, and then he no. goes for the bomb. Well, there's no hands he's yep. bluffing with that he beats him, but there's hands he's value betting with that beat him that he's always, that he's not always, but he's most likely going to fold to a check raise. Um, I mean, he's not going to bluff with a hand like uh, pocket sevens because, you know, that hand could be good and he might just check. But uh, I think when Jungle Man calls the turn there, his hand looks... Uh, Kind of weak. Oh, Sorrell's topping up for 10,000 more here. He pulled out a big flack. Welcome back to Vienna and the Party Poker Big Game 6. It's the perfect setting for a perfect game. And let's have a look at the leaderboard right now. Phil Locke, the big winner here. Uh, everybody else at the table is uh, stuck. Sorel just got there, of course, so uh, 2,000 down. Daniel Jungle Monkates, a lot of action. He's down 26,000. Yeah, he's really starting to slip. And if you look at the V-chips, I mean, both JP and Baron are, you know, just way up there in the 50s, which is, is pretty strong, isn't it? <laughs> it is. What are V-chips? It's like uh, voluntarily putting money in. Oh, like I understand. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, like. Okay. Uh, but uh, that is the stat that we keep our eye on because every four hours when they have the elimination, 
the the one the, the player with the highest V chip is the uh, the one that's immune. Right, of course. Um, so. Uh, and they're a little deceiving those V chip stats because, of course, they don't take into account the uh, the mandatory straddles and things. But you can usually subtract 16 from them. So Sorrell opens with the queen jack off here. And Ignat is definitely going to at least call with the 6 7. Free bets you a thousand? Yep, he free bets you a thousand. <laughs> you hate this if you're true. You want to call. How bad do you want to call? I mean, is it possible to sort of explain how bad you want to yeah, call? Not really. <laughs> you're on the button. You've got you've got Livio in there. I mean, yeah. You just want to. It's like being on a diet and walking into a bakery. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty strong sensation. I feel like when you and he did call. You know, whatever. Yeah, of right. course. You, sometimes you just eat the roll. You know, you just. It just looks just, too good. It looks just too good. Juicy. You yeah. just break down and he just did it whatever you know it's just too juicy and honestly i mean it's not even bad i mean we're, we're talking about it like it's uh right. like yeah, it's cheating ignat is twenty five thousand deep I yeah mean, i mean the guy right. is 20 and, and oh. sam's in position he knows that right. mizzy's likely to just call if he has any hand that's playable post slop which he doesn't so he should fold here but uh Mizzy called anyway because he's getting a good price, but I don't like Mizzy. And there it is. And there it is. Oh, Up and wow. down straight Hello. throw for Ignat and uh, set for uh, uh, for Sam. This is going to be a lot of trouble. Now, now it's I like a call from Sam here. Yeah. Because Mizzy's in the pot. You want to trap him. And Mizzy might check raise bluff. And you want to make your hand look weak. Bravo. Bravo. This is good. Uh, you want to let Livu continue to bluff if he has air. And the only way you're going to get value from raising is if he has a hand that he's going to continue betting with anyway, like an overpair. And if he has that, he's going to bet the turn One regardless. So there's no point in really raising. You don't really accomplish anything except give away a lot of the strength of your hand. So I really like a call here. Unfortunately, oh! uh, you can't put him on a hand that has any <laughs> equity versus yours because, you know, it's so unlikely that he has a hand that could draw out to beat yours. Uh, Sick turn. Which, of course, uh, Livu doesn't know. Trigget's going to be livid here because he's been... He's been running kind of bad today. And, but but uh, the, the, the stacks work anyway. If Liv, any size bet that Livio makes, you can call again, can't you? Because you can get his stack on the river very reasonably. Yeah, or, what are the I mean, Livio's got 23,000 back. And Sam covers him, right? So, yeah. so Sam should... Yeah, he could just call the turn here. Uh, it depends what he thinks. If he thinks Livio has a big hand, he could raise because, uh, you know, his hand could look like a pair and a straight draw like 5-6, six. Six, um, something like that, 9-7, uh, where he's like kind of semi-bluffing with it now, trying to get him to fold a big hand. Um, it depends on what he thinks about his opponent. If he just calls here, his opponent has a pot size bet left, and almost surely he's going to shove the river if he has an overpair, like what he's representing. So Sam could call here, and not much really hurts him. I mean, even if a 6 rolls off... Um, it's bad if his opponent has two aces, but it's it's not like Sam ever expects his opponent to suck out on him if a six comes on the river. So he's not really worried about any cards here. Ignat did make one bluff that just didn't make any sense on the river at one point. So don't you think, you know, Sam, in, in Sam's mind, he's stuck a little bit, that he does have a range here where he's just, you know, just well, going Well, Sam is just crushing. Nuts. Sam yeah. is just crushing Ignat's race here. So, I mean, he's just... Right. He's, he's going to snap call this river when he shoves. He's going to be excited about it, too. He's going to feel like, oh, I finally got him. Yeah. Um, Sam's just praying right now that Ignat shoves. Little does he know, you know, he's, he's drawing dead. But uh, it's brutal. It's just a complete cooler. And Wow, he's going to get stacked. This Sam, is, uh, he's going to get stacked. Watch. All out call. He's gone all in. All in. Eighteen. Yeah, he's See, showing he, he it. Even, yeah, he's showing it like he's got the. He's nuts, showing obviously. it like I don't want to slow roll you. He, you know, obviously. he just flipped it over like 18, you know, 900. don't even turn over your aces or, or your. Yeah. I mean, he could have rivered ace king and shoved there for value, um, because it looks like Sam has two tens, two jacks, uh, two queens, something like that at the best. So what a cooler, That's... and that is just gonna change the game. I mean, first of all, Sam is now just going to strap on the... And not that he hadn't strapped on the seatbelt, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, he's going to start targeting Ignat's money. He's going to top up for the maximum here, uh, 40K, and, wow, we're just going to get a lot of money. This on. is going to change, yeah, this is going to change things a bit, I think. I mean, it's just so brutal to get... Uh 
to get cooled like that after you've been playing for 14 hours and you know you finally get in a spot where you're it just mentally your expectation on the river is finally I have this hand and this guy's shoving all his money in and you just beat him in the pot expecting to win 35,000 and you're crushed and it's just it, it's mentally it's just so difficult to overcome after you know you've been playing for 14 hours it's uh, smart of Ignat not to turn his hand over there. It's giving away way too much information to turn his hand over there. Yeah. Uh, it's better for your opponents to just think you, you know, whatever. You just you were, whiffed and just decided not to stab in a four-way pot. Yeah, you were three betting light because, I mean, he, they had to think he had low cards because right. any high cards made two pair of straight. So uh, it's good to let him think that. <laughs> it's an interesting check on the flop by him. I guess Ignad feels like, and rightly so, that the players behind him are only going to continue if they flop a hand that could beat ace-king or aces. I think uh, he was just trying to be deceptive yeah. somehow. Yeah, and I mean, just pocket You think control. he was going for a check raise there? I, I think so. I mean, he's a funny guy. <laughs> what, what do we know about Ignad? <laughs> well, just from watching him, him play earlier, I mean, he was... He sh strongly valued top pair. <clears throat> Yeah, that's a, valued it. That's true. I don't think he would fold the flop, but I think he was just going for a little bit of pot control just because he uh, just won a big yeah. one and it's four ways. And it's, and it's a tough spot. If he gets a lot of action from anyone, you know, he, he, he's got to feel like he's he, he's not thrilled about it. So here. So Catalan's back on the re-raise train here with. Catalan, yeah, is back to his tendencies of, of uh, very light and very small free bets. And I think Sorrell is. Here in position. No, I think Wait. he's going for a for a light four bet here. And rightly so. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean Catalan, these guys are just too good, and and you can't think uh, that you can profitably uh, do that kind of thing, like light free bet all the time. People are gonna start to be um, very aware of what you're doing, and uh, before with JP, he actually had a hand here. Sorrell is just, you know sending a message in a way and like you said he was quiet earlier but it's it's only so long before he uses the information that he sees right. on the table and figures it out and he's a really smart player and you know he's he's gonna figure it out the thing that's interesting is <laughs> that that he calls <laughs> well that's yeah that's also interesting but just something to notice Sorel's uh hand that he decided to forbet with here Ace-8 off actually is a kind of a good hand to do it with in the sense that it takes away a lot of the possibilities that your opponent has an ace um, and also, if your opponent does have a hand like two kings or two queens, if you have a hand like seven eight, it's really hard to out, out flop them. But if you have an ace, you could just flop an ace and out flop right. a, a big pair like that. So it's it's not a bad hand to do it with. Um, and just the fact that you know Catalan's three betting with queen six uh, is, is is reason enough. So Sorel is always C betting this kind of flop, even if it's like so. Ugly. I think he's checking here almost yeah. always. I think he just feels like Catalan calls so much, and he's not going to fold any spade. Right. Uh, he could easily have the ace with the ace of spades, which he's just gonna stick it in with. Like even if he has king jack with the king of spades, he's he's gonna he's not gonna fold that. And so Sorel, I don't know, he might see bad here, but I, I I don't love it. I'd probably check, even though that, you know, you, it might win the pot. Twenty-five. I mean, it should here. Catalina just he has, has a yeah, he's got an open ender, but. But I mean, he called no. three thousand with queen six. What's he looking for? He flopped three, four, five. I mean. Doesn't get much better. Catalan might might call you. Shoot, he might raise here. I mean, who knows what he's gonna do here? How much did Mizzy bet? Twenty five hundred. Yeah, he's not folding. There's oh. no way he's folding for twenty five hundred. The Baron. <laughs> and see, that's what I don't like. I mean, he's You're peeling. So right. yeah. He's peeling this flop with Queen Six. He's gonna call with anything. And I think Mizzy's C bet here, even though he does have the best hand. He just has no idea what, what Catalan has. And if Catalan has any pair, any spade, any straight draw, any, you know, any overcards with a, with a spade, he's just going to call. And so it's just... Right. There's 10,000 in the pot now. Yeah. Now, now, now Mizzy's in a terrible spot. He now pretty now. much has to check here unless he's going to make some... Actually, now that he bet the flop, I kind of like betting the turn check. because Catalan never really has that strong of a hand. Sure. But I mean, that doesn't mean that he's not going to call again with any of the hands he called the flop with. And of course he of hits. Of course he hits the seven. Now he's gonna bet like a rock star. Well, he, I mean, he, he might have won. He might have won that pot very often. I don't. We don't know if, if he was willing to bluff on the river. What do you think? You don't think he was? willing? No, to... he's gonna bluff. He is. He yeah. Is. If the river comes like a an eight, he's gonna bluff. I think. You know, so Searle's actually in a really tough spot there. If the guy is always gonna go call, call. I mean, you know. 
I mean, it was the right play, given the whole situation. It's just... I mean, given Sorrell's hand, account, he had the yeah. correct equity yeah. to call. But, I mean, you know, you can't know that. I mean, Sorrell bet the flop with a hand he shouldn't have bet with. And, and every time Sorrell bets the flop with hands he should bet the flop with, he's going to have, you know, Catalan crushed. Um, so he's going to have... The way to do that is to just show less aggression in spots where, you know, your opponent's not going to fold and you don't have anything. <laughs> And for Sorrell right now, he's no, he's only losing five thousand, but he's. But it is frustrating. It's not necessarily the money. It's just he's lost consecutive pots. He's been check raised. He's been forced out of showdown on the river. He did finally flop a big hand and didn't get any money from it, which is probably pretty frustrating. Um, it's going to be really frustrating when he sees later that he could have won. He could have got it all in on the flop. Maybe if if you know if if his opponent would have bet, maybe they get it all in on the flop, and he could have stacked them. And so it's got to be kind of frustrating. You get in these really good games, and you tell yourself you're just going to watch and see what's happening. But then you get involved, and maybe Sorrell hasn't exactly figured out what's happening yet, in a sense. And that that could be why he was playing, you know, tight in the beginning. And now I think he did figure out what was happening with Catalan, and he correctly made the decision based on the information he had and it didn't work out for him and that's got to be frustrating too yeah because <laughs> right now i think these guys are feeling like gosh how, you just have to make a hand against kyle and i guess you just he's just decided that you know you have to just flop it he's the over there Baron. i know exactly what's going through sorrell's mind he says he's thinking okay i've got fifteen thousand on the table i can never leave this game never leave this seat while well, this guy's got money i just better i just better make sure i got all my resources lined up you know <laughs> yeah. the miz gentleman might call here yeah i feel like he's gonna call this off a lot um he knows that so much of the time uh, well, it's a combination of things. He could have the good ha best hand some of the time. I think he, he has the best hand, you know, 10%, 15% of the time or something like that. But he also feels like Kelly's just in such a tough spot post-flop um, where he's just going to check fold the turn so much. Even with a hand like fives, I mean, he's, it's not a great spot. He might just check fold and uh, maybe not fives. But, you know, if he has a hand like, you know, king high or, or any random two cards, it's just, he's just in such a bad spot out of position against Jungle Man here. So... I really like watching Jungle Man play. I mean, like you say, he just does seem to upset people in the sense that he just puts them in tough spots. He's yeah. always, he's never making it easy on you. He's just, you know. But JP, is, he's, he's great. He's a really good hand reader, and he's he's kind of figured it out. He knows Jungle Man's game. He knows Jungle Man is capable of floating the swap with nothing and betting the turn. And, um, you know, from JP's point of view, Jungle Man, there's not that many hands he's betting for value on the turn. Maybe he's betting a pocket pair um, and an ace, but you know he didn't re-raise preflop, so it's hard for him to have a big ace. And he didn't re-raise preflop, so it's hard for him to have a big pocket pair. So, uh, and he does have a gut shot as well as a five to go along with it if he's wrong. You think um, that Jungle Man here ever gives up? No. No shot. Not while we play the hand. He's gonna bluff again. He knows what Kelly has. He knows the best hand Kelly has is. 29. You know, a pocket pair, um, maybe an ace if he got tricky, but most of the time Kelly has sevens or eights or something like that, and he knows he only beats a bluff on the river, and Jungle Man's going to put him to the test. Jungle Man is just is just tough. It's just it's just so tough. You can't play against. It's just sick like that. Welcome back to Vienna, home for the 48-hour cash game that is the Party Poker Big Game 6. One man is dominating the action. It's the American, Phil Locke. His nearest rival, Ignat Liviu, on 17K, the rest all in negative equity. The latest to fall from grace is J.P. Kelly, and it was that man Locke who inflicted the damage. Jesse, do you think this is this is just gonna play bigger and bigger in a way? I think it will. I, I think that we we've kind of learned about these yeah. cash games that sometimes there's these little humps you have to get over. It's not just when it's late at night because not enough people here. There's not enough energy in the room. You know what I mean? You know what it's like? Empty right. casino. The guys. Right. There's someone vacuuming in the corner, you know. It's like, it's, you just, you know, you feel like I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah, you know? it did feel like a vacant motel this morning when I got in. It's like. I mean, 
you know, three, four hours from now, the WP WPT will be starts. Out. People will come, and come in. They're gonna see these guys there. They're just gonna be like, "What?" Yeah. And uh, this game is just gonna—it's gonna rock. It is going to rock. You're right. It is interesting to see how um, the surroundings uh, will affect the players. The fact that in the Montesino, the table is right in the middle of the action and around the uh, WPT tables and the cash tables, and how that having their eyes on and of course these guys are used to it in a way yeah. but but there's so many guys in this town sure. right now who are like Sorrell you know they know they're really good players they'll walk oh, in here they're just gonna see a lineup of guys with tons of chips on the table all who have obviously been up all night yeah. and they're just not gonna care I don't care who it is you know what I mean yeah. it's like they're just gonna they're gonna be fresh and they're just gonna want to get in this game So I missed the action on the flop. Uh, Trickett raised pre-flop and then he bet the flop. Jungleman... Peeled I... with the gut shot and now picked up a club draw. Well, yeah, it's an overcard, a gut shot, and a backdoor flush draw, and he's Jungleman. So, you know, he has a lot going for him. And, and... Trickett just is unfazed and calls the... Did he pot it? Oh, almost pot it on the turn. I think Trickett's played Jungleman better than anybody oh, at this yeah, table tonight. Sure. Um, he, I don't think he's winning against him, but he's definitely, you know, he's got a bit unlucky. He's played him well. Check. And, uh, and you know, check. to be honest, I <clears throat> I like this spot on the turn, but Trickett could, you could even argue for uh, a check raise here with how often Jungle Man, I don't know his stack size, but... Misha. Yep, Jungle Man gave up on the river. Yeah, that was a, a terrible nice. river for Jungle Man because all the draws missed, and if Trickett has a queen or two jacks or what he's representing, he's gonna just uh, call it down. It's almost better for Jungle Man to have two fives in a way because if he has two tens, uh, yeah, he beats some sevens and stuff like that, but he has less outs um, when he when Jungle Man does have a big hand, and so when he has two fives, at least he has you know more straight cards to compensate if he's wrong. But, I mean, it's a good spot to check raise in a way, too, because Jungle Man floats so lightly, and a lot of the hands he's betting on the turn are hands he's going to fold to a check raise, like pocket eights, uh, maybe any seven, pocket sixes, something like that. Uh, and if Sam check raises the turn, he's, he's going to fold those hands. There does seem to be this mini marathon going on inside the big game marathon, and it's who quits first, Jungle Man or the masseuse. You know, she's like, well, I've got, I've got Jungle Man on the line. He wants me to keep going. I mean, at a dollar sixty a minute, like she'll go forty hours, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, really? She does look fatigued, though. Think? She's like, oh come on. I mean, this is like this is like a month's work she's gonna get off of this. I mean, this is like unbelievable. You think she's quitting? Yeah, and Missy's got it here. He's definitely going for the three bet. Um, I like about 15, 1600 here. You should make a pretty big bet because he gives him odds to call pretty quickly uh, if he makes it any smaller than that. Now, Ignat, that we know doesn't like to fold hands, <laughs> is thinking about flatting the sevens there. And with, with Jungle Man and, and behind you, who's possible to four bet it's or so fill bad. behind it's you so it's so bad and mizzy could have something too but <clears throat> the other alternative is it's bad in that way it's good in the sense that if you call lock it, and jungle man call and then you go four ways to the flop with a pocket pair right uh, and you know and, and you have great implied odds and that's what he's thinking about right now and, and and you could see it toying with him because like i said it's like walking into a bakery you really don't want to fold those two sevens and and <laughs> and, and, and and although it's not the best play in the world, I would do it sometimes too, and I've done it before, and I, I really can't blame him for calling. Jungle Man's going to call here for sure. I mean, he has, you know, <laughs> He's position. Got a juicy and, one. <clears throat> right. I would have called if I, could, if I knew the flop was going to connect. Yeah, and it's I Phil had a pretty one. bad hand to call with. I mean, if he had suited, he'd call, or if he had a pair, he'd call, and. And Livu knows that, and he figures he's going at least three ways to the flop. So his call is not, not terrible. No, no. The problem was just having somebody like Jungleman open the pot, and he's really a guy that's willing to forebet. And, and well, I think you Phil Locke away. opened the pot, which which changes a lot. Uh, Jungleman just called on the button, oh, so that's he could right. have any. That's right, that's right. So with Sorrell only playing 13K back here, 
I mean, what do you do? Do you, do you, uh, do you check raise? Do you just 26. bet go? Do you bet fold? 26. Well, I mean, you could hope that... I mean, Ignan called cold, so I mean, he... He has a pair a lot, but a lot of times, you know, he has queens, jacks, tens, nines. Um, and, you know, the, the, the bigger pairs on those aren't going to fold. Uh, it's tough to see that here. I, I probably give it up. Ignod um, called. I mean, he has a pair a lot. I, I don't know. Jungle Man peels the flop so light that he might even call with queen eight here. I mean, he just loves to peel, and so... If he had, a, if there was a heart on the flop, Jungle Man would call. Yeah. But uh, with another backdoor, yes. Yeah, with a flush draw on the flop and without a backdoor, he's not gonna call. But, but, but to Mizzy's credit, he did have two overs and a backdoor flush draw and a straight draw. So it's hard to just, you know, check fold, especially when you know these guys are calling so light pre-flop. The controversial Sorel Mizzy has won over four million dollars. With his sights now firmly set on the big game, the fresh-faced Canadian has been quick to identify the stalwarts of endurance poker as the big threats around this table. Specifically Phil and Jungle Man, they're actually like not human, so I don't think it gives me an advantage. They, they're, they're not like normal people, like they just can be up for like 173 hours straight like without being tired or fatigued at all. So. Um, but I think just by looking around at the table, I can kind of see like who's stuck and who's who's actually winning. And um, yeah, so I think that uh, in that sense of just being fresh and like, you know, uh, my mind is clear. Uh, I definitely am I'm in a good spot here. And in terms of playing, Players have had a break. Some of them have taken a shower. Some of them have gotten something to eat. I'm ready. I'm ready. How about you? You know, 30 more hours, 32 more hours. Who knows? I'm ready. I'm ready, Jesse. This is uh, this is the particularity of this format. 48 hours uh, straight that changes a lot uh, for the players. You know, probably a good strategy to just go back to the hotel, take a quick shower during this hour break. You know, feel rested. Sometimes just a, a, like you said, a change of clothes. It makes you feel like it's a whole new day, right? What's more important is how will the players react of the guys uh, who have played in this game since our number one, Jungle Man, Phil Locke, and uh, Sam Trickett. Yeah, that, that adds a, a big layer, a new layer to the, to the whole situation. It's just uh, adapting to these players that are probably going to be tired at some point. I mean, they're... They're amazing, but they're still human. So it's going to be interesting to see when guys like Sorel, he, he came in and did pretty well, a couple of tough spots. But, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how they interact together. Now, this pot is sort of like picking up from where we left off with uh, Trickett raising up to 300. And Catalan, who we like to call the Big Red Baron, has called and then just let out onto the flop. Um, he, he does this kind of thing. Uh, he likes to bet. He doesn't have it here, and Trickett's raised him. I mean, you'd say this is the end of the hand, Giovanni, but, you know, the Red Baron is... Uh... He's a tricky player. We'll give him that. I mean, and... Uh... Wow, and look at this. He's he's going for a three bet here. I mean, this is um, this is the kind of play where all of a sudden, if you're Trickett... You, don't, you, you should not like your ace too much, but then again, is he really doing that with what? I mean, ace-king... Yeah, sure, ace queen maybe. Ace jack is probably just gonna call. It's, I mean, just calling here is definitely Sam Trickett's best option. And and Trickett will know that one of the possibilities is that Baron is added. I mean, he, he'd probably expect him to be at it with a flush draw, a straight draw. Absolutely. Uh, all right, that, that um, makes it so much this easier. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult <laughs> now for Sam to let go. <laughs> and now Catalan is thinking, maybe I make a small bet, I can make a flush draw fold or even a jack in a way. So I'm thinking he's going to barrel again, at least like a, a 4K. It doesn't need to be big because, I mean, whatever's folding is folding for any bet on this turn and, and anything else is just uh, DA source. Well, Trickett will never raise any more, not till the river. No. And 
<laughs> I mean, he's been off. I saw some of his tweets, Sam. You can follow on social media. So he was, he's been very unlucky. He's gotten stacked all over the place. This is not a bad way to start again, where the only thing you're really thinking to yourself is, is there some weird chance there's five aces in the deck, you know? <laughs> I mean, uh... Actually, he makes it really big. I don't. I really don't like this back from from Catalan because if Sam is on a flush draw or a weak pair that's gonna fold, it's gonna fold for any amount, pretty much. Uh, Seven thousand into a uh, nine thousand pot doesn't make a lot of sense. This is so every poker player's dream. Yep. You're just like lying awake at night thinking, "Yeah, I've got the four aces. They're betting into me." I mean, <laughs> this never happens in it real does life. Not. It does not. I mean, Sam deserves this spot, though. He played really well. Just has been really unlucky, and uh, and just and now Catalan has given up. Obviously, once he gets called in that turn, it's either the ace most of the time or a jack that is never gonna fold. So. Yeah, he has kind of played it now. Where when checking on the river, where you think, can I get paid off by a jack? That sort of thing. It doesn't really matter, does no. it? You just bet, and you don't. You know, Catalina only has 10k behind, so I mean, if yeah, Sam knows here, Catalina wasn't on a move, because because with 10k behind, if he's got any kind of value range, he's shoving that river no matter what. So, um, yeah, he extracted the maximum obviously against 10 high. The raise on the flop was really tricky. Most players would just uh, flat call there and, you know, it, it, you're in a situation where you're way ahead or way behind. So there's not a lot of value in raising that flop because you you, most of the time you're just going to get action by hands that beat you. But Sam knows very well that if there's one play that's going to uh, spew off his chips uh, in front of a raise there, it's definitely Catalan. So. And it's sort of reinsured the idea for him that this is a game he wants to be in. You know, you got quads and you've just won, what, about 16,000 against yep. the, uh, against the, the 10, 10 high? high? Yeah, it's a pretty sweet spot to be in, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's sitting on 50K, which covers pretty much everybody but Phil Lack. Well, remember, for the viewers at home, uh, the maximum top up right now is to 40K. So. He's really comfortable. I, definitely, I see him uh, play for 24 hours straight, uh, 48 hours straight. Okay, so that's that's your pie. Oh, jeez. The fact that he just flops the joint every single time is not hurting either. No, and Jungle Man's been isolating Phil, not not every time, but a, enough times. And one thing about it is that uh, he's going to peel off the flop. You're going to have to play a flop with him. Yeah. Jeez, this just gets better. <laughs> Turns the straight into the straight flush draw. Five check. It's not a great card because Jungle Man, even with a big hand, will will not be able to represent the eight very well. Yeah, there you go. And now it's gonna be bet and fold, I guess. How much is he betting? Seven thousand three hundred and twenty-five. I like that over bet. This is beautiful. You know, to over bet in this spot. Uh, with the straight is just is just really I think I think jungle man may pay off if he had ace high you know sometimes in this spot you you call and then you you show you get shown the ace seven well Phil does feel, not have ace high right exactly so king high and he probably doesn't have king high either maybe this is not it's just not a bluffing spot and it's a, you, you don't bluff for and when he shows you the four seven you're gonna feel even worse he's not gonna show you I mean it's just very good and it is one of the things I do love about Jungle Man. It may be painful. He's thought about it, but he is so disciplined. And even now, and look at this smile yeah. too. <laughs> it is. The, the kid is just amazing. I mean, it's just as far as a comfort zone at the table. He just comes across as a genuinely nice guy, and, and just very likable, and that just loves the game so much. Five four. <laughs> you do you do just get the idea that Jungleman's eyes are going to roll back in his head and he's just going to like <laughs> fall on the table, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, it's scary, but I really do know what you're saying. <laughs> he's going to pass out. See, I mean, he has been up for a long time. Yeah, during the break, I asked him how, when was the last time he went to sleep and he gave it a, a long pause and then he said, 
I kind of slept a couple of hours the other day. <laughs> What's the other day? It's just so That's random. Question. <laughs> the Baron may start feeling like he's getting picked on here. No, I think he's going to let this one go again. He's just... He needs to top up if he wants to play any of those wacky hands. That's a bad call. That's a really bad call. Heads up. Queen 10, when you're so short stack, is just gross. And there you go. Yeah, exactly uh, what I was going to say. If you flop your top pair, you're going with it because you're so short. And you don't crash any other hand. So you're not getting action from any worse hand. It's just playing bad in this spot. Seven bets. 2,250. He's checked in the dark, the Baron, Mizzy's bet, and really can't see any other play than the all-in. Yeah, pretty much. And you're going broke with the hand anyway. It's just a matter of do I check call to let him spew one more streak. Just a matter of shoving or check calling, I guess. It's just one of those bad periods you get into in a cash game. You know it, Gio. Yeah, I mean, yeah, We've all been there. Uh, you start losing a little bit. You try and push the envelope, and Excellent. one decision uh, snowballs into another. And now you just need a, a five adder to get out of it. I mean, yeah. that's <laughs> and that's uh, the name of the game, right. Jesse. <laughs> now, now, now uh, from from Sorel's point of view, he doesn't need the five adder to get out of it. <laughs> you know, he he wants the other 40, 45 cards yep. in the deck twice. Oh, but uh, we'll see. This is going to have a big effect on the game. Uh, and what's Mizzy going to do with a big stack? Is is the Baron going to rebuy? If he draws out, is it the end of Mizzy? All this stuff, kind of uh, game dynamics for the last card. That's it. Uh, that's uh, taught. Yeah, I think he's leaving. And I think we got our answer there. Baron is going to take a break. Yeah, he, he understands that his play has deteriorated dramatically. And... It's just a really, really tough lineup. He's not running good either. This is, it's probably time to smart to leave right there. Sorel Mizzy finally joins an elite group at the top of the profit and loss leaderboard after taking on and then taking out Catalin. He leaves the big game 30K down. His departure leaves the table with Phil Locke still on top. If not Livy who joins Locke with a healthy profit and Sorel Mizzy makes up the list of players doing well around this table. Mizzy, one of the most recent recruits to the big game. He faced the jungle man early on and came through but inevitably lost out to Phil Locke. The win over Catalin keeps his head above water. The path for Locke has been one of increasing profit. Rarely has the American taken a backward step and has remained a near constant presence at the top of the leaderboard. Ignat Liviu has suffered the indignity of being voted off the big game, but hours later re-emerged and has exacted his revenge on the table, steadily building a profit. And as the game enters its 18th hour, the prospect of another 30 looms in the party poker big game six.